Um, I have a video of Michael Irvin that was... Shit. Fuck. Hey. Oh. That hurt. <laughs> Here we go. Damn. Fucking win. Ow. Wow. <laughs> Good morning, friends. Mark Holmes here with my buddy, well, Joe Boo's at the Red Brick House. Tag on, Joe Boo's at the Red Brick House, holding the place down. But we got Joe Bear, who's been holding down Joe Boo's man cave. As always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. It is finally freaking Friday. The weekend is here, unless you are a Dallas Cowboy rookie, because rookie minicamp starts today, where they'll be on the field twice today, getting their first action as actually Dallas Cowboys. And the future is now. The future is now, right now. Now, here's my thoughts here, okay? I've heard so many people who have said that this is a rebuild. It's not a rebuild. How is it a rebuild? Rebuild, you've done basically the same thing every single year. You can go to 2021 where you let go two starting wide receivers on the offense. Mari Cooper, Cedric Wilson, right? Uh, you also let go two starting offensive linemen. Lyle Collins and Connor Williams. You also let go Randy Gregory. If this is a rebuild, then the Dallas Cowboys are rebuilding every year. They are. This is a roster turnover and a reload. The Dallas Cowboys, and I have a picture from the Arizona Super Bowl um, at the Pro Bowl there. And I have a picture of what is probably the peak of our team. It was amazing being in that Pro Bowl. I was literally walking two steps behind Tony Romo, who had DeMarco Murray right beside him, and looking in front of him, it was Jason Witten, it was um, Zach Martin, it was Travis Frederick, it was Tyron Smith, and it was LP Lossaman. All Pro Bowlers. Bowlers. That offensive line was incredible. It's sad that we did not win anything with that offensive line, but you have to look at that and say the peak of that offensive line was 2013 to 2016. After that time, things went downhill, and we've been just kind of holding on to that offensive line, much like we did with Tom Landry. Tom Landry, the game had passed him by. People had figured out what he was doing. You could no longer be the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator, and the head coach. Everybody was specialized. And we waited, and we waited, and we waited to move on. Well, the Cowboys, the first hit was Tyron Smith started getting injured on the regular. Travis Frederick had the Hillian Barr syndrome. Jason Witten got old, left and went to the Raiders, retired for a year, and came back. And we're finally restarting this offensive line now with young guys. Maybe this is the last year for Zach Martin. We don't know. But you get a guy like Tyler Guyton. You get a guy like Cooper B. To be, you add there with Tyler Smith. All of a sudden, your offensive line is good for the next bunch of years, provided they play to the capability that you hope. Now, the Cowboys have uh, – here's one thing I will say that to me – I think happens with players more times than not is that first season of being there, especially quarterbacks, will set you up for your career. You've been a college player, and I want you to think about this for a second. If you played high school football, right? You played high school football. How many people from your high school team went on to play college football? Probably not a lot. Maybe some of you had five or six or seven or eight. Maybe you guys had one or two. Think about that. All of those college players are the top one or two percent of high school players. Think about if you played college football. How many people were on your team? We had like 90 players at JMU. 
We had Charles Haley. We had Gary Clark. And we had the kicker from Buffalo. And that was the course of three years. Three players. So now you're talking about the 1% of the 1% making it to the NFL. You may have been great. You may have been on a great team that had five or six players that are going into the NFL. You go to the NFL, now everybody is great. Even the guys that are low down on the totem pole. We call them bums and things, but to make it to that level is damn near impossible. And sometimes guys get overwhelmed to start out with, especially quarterbacks. But having a guy like Duke Merriweather, who gets your feet wet, kind of lets you know what's coming from the NFL, gets you a little extra work in, may be the advantage that the Dallas Cowboys have on the offensive line. Why we have offensive linemen that seem to come out the box and play pretty well. Tyler Smith, trained as a guard in training camp, and then got switched because Tyler Smith to a tackle and played damn good as his rookie year and his all-pro in his second year. I'm not going to say that Cooper Beebe is going to be all-pro his second year or Tyler Guyton is going to be, but it wouldn't surprise me because if there's anything you can look at with the Cowboys is they've been really good at drafting offensive linemen. Defensive linemen, the one-technique guys, uh, I'm still holding my breath for Mozzie. But offensive linemen you got to give them the benefit of the doubt. And you could look at it and say, the Cowboys were rebuilding when we drafted Mozzie. Right? We let go a bunch of offensive linemen. Turned out that was a great thing. So for everybody who's out there that the Cowboys are going to hit the reset button, they're going to let Dak go, they're going to get rid of C.D. Lamb, they're going to let go Micah Parsons, understand that it's the Dallas Cowboys that are all the talk. I'm sitting here this morning making my coffee, and I see an article that Cowboys' $50 million receiver could be traded before June 1st, and they're talking about trading Brandon Cooks. And I'm kind of like, why would you trade, I mean, to get $8 million of cap room? If you really want to get that $8 million of cap room, you just sign C.D. Lamb because you're sitting here, with your number two wide receiver, you're talking about trading him. And if you only traded Amari Cooper for a fifth-round pick, what do you expect to get for Brandon Cooks? Trading him for a seventh to get $8 million? Seriously? It has literally gotten to be, and people will say, I'm clickbait, but damn. The clickbaiters are getting clickbaited by, you know, other bullshit. You know, we got the Traylon Burks. You know, the Cowboys may be trying to make a trade for Traylon Burks and stuff. It's like every day it's a new flavor of, you know, some conversation. But it's always centered around the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, that, that rules the world. Now, the good news for the Cowboys is they have all of their undrafted rookie free agents. All 12 of them are signed and under contract. And... Reporting, I did this last night, I think about 11.30 last No, it was actually 11.58 that all of our draft picks, with the exception of Marshawn Nealon, are under contract and are ready to be out on the field today. So that's the good news. The thing I will say that I'm actually happy about is, and will actually play pay dividends and maybe a little bit of an advantage over the Eagles who in their mind they're the greatest team since sliced bread I hate to say it to them but I believe you're not as good as you think you are you're not as good as you think you are and for you guys to change coordinators again the learning curve you may be better by the end of the season with Kellen Moore but you still, <laughs> look, Mike's over here laughing. You might be better, but I'm sitting here thinking about what happened with Justin Herbert. Everybody says Justin Herbert's got more talent than Dak Prescott. You could look at the weapons that Justin Herbert had. People say, oh, but he was injured some last year. Well, Dak Prescott was injured too with the broken thumb, but nobody gives him any quarters. So get out my face with that. He regressed. It's hard to go ahead in the shortened off-season training camps, OTAs, reduced amount 
to pick up a new system, especially since you don't play full speed until you actually have a game. And with teams not putting their quarterback out in preseason, the first time you're actually running your system full go is week one in the NFL. So the Cowboys have an advantage of having the same system with your quarterback from last year to this year. They will get more of the nuances of this offense and having the same receivers in here and things, having Zeke coming back, who's a better blocking back, a short yardage guy, this offense should not skip a beat for all those out there saying we're doing a rebuild. There's a lot of teams out there that wish they could do a rebuild and they have a quarterback and, uh, excuse me, a MVP candidate quarterback and the number one receiver coming back on the rebuild. That's a pretty good rebuild right there. So let's get to meet a little taste. Shout out to the Dallas Cowboys for getting our draft picks interviews and check out our guys. Here last week, but to actually be in the building, get going to rookie mini camp. How does it feel to kind of be here and get acclimated? Uh, it feels amazing. Cause they're young. Uh, trying to get on the grass, man. I, we got to do all this medical first, but I'm excited to be here. I think this is extremely fun. Uh, I'm actually a cowboy now officially. It's my first day at work, so I, I, I'm excited. This is everything I've ever dreamed of. Yeah, putting pen to paper, did you have kind of a feeling doing that? I haven't done it yet. I haven't done it yet, but I'll update you when I do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then getting to know Mike Solari and also getting next door and working with Duke over the course of the last week, what are kind of the main focuses for you as you make this transition to left tackle? Uh, just polishing my technique, becoming a better O-lineman in any way that I can. Uh, we all have the same common goal for myself, and that's uh, maximizing me as a player. So mm, love it. Uh, everything that we can possibly do to help me get better is what we're doing. Have you been able to kind of get used to these other rookies that are in the class? Cooper Beebe, I know y'all play in the same conference as each other, but uh, getting getting used to these guys? Yeah, I've been a big fan of Cooper Beebe for a long time. Like, before I was even, like, starting on the offensive line, I was a fan of him. Like, I love his nasty. I love his game. And uh, I, I'm a big fan of him. And I've also talked with a couple of the old linemen that, that are also coming here with me. And uh, we've been clicking pretty well. And rookie minicamp this week, I mean, you can't accomplish it all on a weekend, but what's kind of your main focus right now is just to get in the building and learn everything? Uh, get in the building, uh, earn my respect, uh, get better as a, as a player and as a person and uh, get more acclimated to the Dallas Cowboys. You got to love that because um, – all right, man, just kind of talk about being in the building, being able to get acclimated. You officially start your NFL journey this weekend. How does it feel? Does it feel surreal? Yeah, it feels good. Justin Rogers. Um, just being here, you know, it feels like a dream. So but I'm going to make the best of it. Yeah, absolutely. This defensive tackle position, I don't know how much you know about it coming into the building, but there's a pretty good opportunity for you, even as a seventh-round pick. Have you put much thought into it, or are you just trying to take it one day at a time? Uh, I say one day at a time, but I know i got to hit the ground running, so that's why I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy to be here. Yeah. Have you been able to meet with any of the rookies or any other players so far? Um, no, not for real. You know, we all just got here this morning, so I'm definitely going to chop it up with them later today. Yeah. How uh, how confident are you are you in your run stopping ability? I know last year you had a really big year in being able to just stop the run. I assume that's the role you'd be brought in to do this year. How yeah. confident are you in that ability? I'm very confident. Confident. You know, that's that been my job since I've been in college, so I'm definitely going to keep doing it. If you could do one thing this weekend, just to on on your goal list, what would that be? Um, sure, no. Um, just improve in front of the coaches, show the coaches why they drafted me. So that's about it. You gotta love that. It'll just be here. You're gonna put pen to paper later, and just officially be in the NFL. Is it kind of surreal so far? Yeah, it feels great, and I'm glad to be in Dallas for sure. Yeah. Uh, have you had much communication with uh, some of your teammates or some of your uh, rookies as well? Uh, we in a group chat though, but I'm saying I'm still meeting them guys. Are you excited to be able to play with guys like Trayvon Diggs and Jerome Bland? Definitely, and we got the uh, Merlin connection too. So yeah, absolutely. Uh, is there anything you're trying to prove this week here at rookie minicamp, or just kind of get in the building and get used to the grind? Uh, yeah, just trying to get uh, used to the grind. Not really trying to prove nothing, prove something to myself for real, but. I ain't coming out here trying to do too much. Yeah, I got you. What has the last week looked like for you since you've been picked? Have you been uh, diving into anything, or are you just really just getting prepared to move to Dallas? Yeah, just getting prepared to move to Dallas. Um, you know, trying to find a spot and all that type of stuff. So. Gotcha. Uh, can you talk to us about your chain a little bit? Yeah, it's just just a one chain. That's my uh, number in college. So, <laughs> went to Zoe for us. Um, yeah, just pinned it. 
right. Eventually put pen to paper and just officially be in uh, It's awesome. It's definitely a dream come true. Uh, extremely grateful to be a part of such a prestigious organization and, uh, you know, look forward to, you know, having that first game in AT&T Stadium, so. Yeah. I don't know how much you know about the tight end room. A lot of young guys and a lot of Big Ten guys. Yeah. excited to get involved with those? No, nah, definitely. Uh, a lot of Big Ten guys. That's what I'm most excited about. Uh, just kind of have banter with them and also just get to learn from those guys. Uh, they have had a really successful tight end room, not only now, but uh, throughout the years. So I look forward to, you know, being a part of that legacy. Yeah, I think the tight end room, I think they would all say the one thing, the one thing they're trying to improve on the most is run block. That's something that you can bring. Yeah. How confident are you in your run block? Uh, I'm definitely confident. Um, I look forward to being able to, you know, learn from everybody and be able to add my, my own, you know, talents to the room. So uh, any way I can help the team win and help the, the organization win is what I'm here to do. So. Any initial impressions on Coach Linda Wells? Uh, he's awesome. Uh, I had great interviews with him throughout the draft process. So I uh, can't wait to work with him. Yeah, are you trying to improve anything this week or really just – just take it all in, uh, learn as much as I can, kind of be a sponge, just absorb everything, uh, get to know the people in the building, and uh, enjoy myself, have fun. It's, it's finally real for me, just being here in this beautiful building and, and you know, signing my papers, finding my contract, it's just, it's just surreal, and I'm just so blessed to be here. Yeah, I talked to Coach Riley earlier this week, and he said whenever you got to Kansas State, you were originally going to be a defensive line, but then you flipped to the other side of the ball. What kind of went into to, to that um, so they, they were straight up honest with me when I was recruiting. They were like, hey, you know, there's a, this possibility. So it wasn't it came as a shock to me. You know, I thought maybe I'd get one year to play defensive line. But, you know, we were short on the position and they needed some help. And, you know, I was going to do whatever the team needed me to do to win. It's kind of felt natural since then? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, have you gotten to talk to Zach Martin or any of the other offensive line guys? Here yeah, um, Zach texted me right after the draft, and you know we kind of talked, and you know he was just you know congratulating me, and you know just telling him to get ready to work, and you know that's what I'm here to do. As an interior guy, how excited are you to play alongside Zach? Oh, it's just I mean it's a dream come true. I mean you're getting to learn from a first ballot Hall of Famer. I mean what more could you want? There's no better person <laughs> there you to go. learn from than him, and you know I'm excited to be in that position to learn from him. The assumption is that you're going to have an opportunity at set. What kind of goes into the preparation side of that, whether it be the snap or anything else from a technical standpoint? I think for me, it's just, you know, I think for the star is just making sure, you know, the dudes trust me. Um, you know, especially in the O-line, it's all about trust. So just making sure that, you know, I'm in the playbook and they feel comfortable having me out there. And then, like you said, just putting it together, you know, the snapping and, and just technique stuff. What does the last week look like for you? Have you, have you put in any prep into uh, on-the-field stuff or just getting ready to move to Dallas, really? Um, no, so yeah, I've been uh, back in Manhattan, you know, doing all the field stuff because I mean they called me right after Coach Sorry, and he was told me straight up he's like, hey, get some snaps going, you're gonna play center. So I've been, you know, prepping ever since then. So if you could prove anything this week, what, what would that be? I think just for me that you know I can compete at this level. I think is the biggest thing, and you know, like I said, I think the biggest thing for me is to earn the trust of my teammates first and foremost, learn the playbook, and you know, just be able to go out there and you know that they can trust me. Love that. How does it kind of feel to be in the building, kind of soak everything? God, in? these guys look so young. Later? Is it kind of all surreal for you? Yeah, I mean, it's it's feeling real. I'm I'm so excited to be here and just looking forward to the, to everything moving forward and to meeting the guys and getting to know everyone here. You were here on a thirty, so you're able to kind of take in the environment at least. But to be here as a Dallas mm -hmm. Cowboy is a little bit different for you. Oh yeah, it's it's different. It feels like I don't know. It just feels like it's home now. Um, so I like I'm part of this place and now I have a connection to this place and it just feels like I belong here. Have you been able to have much communication with Coach McCurley or Coach Zimmer? Yeah, I've been talking to um, Coach McCurley for uh, since last week after the draft and, and things like that moving forward, just trying to get squared away with things. Have you done anything in the last week to prep and get ready or are you just kind of getting everything in order to move to Dallas? Yeah, tra uh, training back home uh, with my track coach, Coach Gary Satterway, a little bit and then also just um, trying to get into the playbook a little too. Yeah, if there's one thing that you could hope to do this weekend or prove this weekend, what would that be? I would be um, that just first of all that I'm here to work. Um, I'm someone that they, uh, someone uh, my peers can rely on, coaches can rely on, um, and that I'm ready to, 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 to do what it takes to win. Amen. All right, so there we have it, guys.
All right, man. Just kind of. All right. So we've got gone through all of them there. You know, I love that. You know, these guys are so young. God, I feel so old, man. But this is the future Dallas Cowboys right here. Uh, shout out to the Dallas Cowboys. Hopefully, we've got some young guys that will be able to get us there. You know, everybody gets all into the, well, you sign this guy, and you sign that guy, you know, but in the excitement that's there. Sometimes it's the team that comes out of nowhere. Nobody thought Green Bay was going to be any good. Nobody did. We certainly did. We literally took them for granted and said, shit, we got these mother humpers and got bitch slapped. So don't believe the hype that the Cowboys are going to be ass ass and that they're rebuilding. Jerry Jones loves it when the Cowboys are at least good. You think Jerry Jones would really go for being a rebuild? And the fact that you're talking about letting go a quarterback when you don't have anybody in there. Oh, I forgot. There's Trey Lance. With that being said, look, Mike, so back in there laughing. With that being said, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And we are going to get ready to roll on out of here. Peace out. Our coach here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Hey, I need um. <laughs>